Welcome to Guy Code, a podcast dedicated to imparting dad wisdom to my son with your host, Koji Steven Sakai and friends. All righty. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Koji and this is episode number 49 of the Guy Code. I wanted to impart all of my wisdom to my son, but of course my son already thinks he knows more than me. So instead of trying to tell him now and having it go one ear and out the other year, I decided to record them here in the hopes that maybe, just maybe in the future when he's ready, he'll listen to my advice and not make the same stupid mistakes I did. So I'll bring on um, guests to impart their wisdom as well. And I have no doubt that their advice will be better than my advice. This week, I brought on my son's baseball coach (laughs) or the, the, the camp that he went to, Angel Ramirez. Angel, how are you? Good, good. Good morning. Good morning. Great. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm a dad. Um, I'm a dad, um, and I love baseball. Baseball is something that I've done since I was a kid. Uh, baseball was always my getaway. I was a foster child growing up. So being in the system, being through the system, uh, knowing that baseball guided me when I had no actual positive guidance uh, to help me make good choices and good decisions that were going to lead to outcomes in the future. Um, when I became a father, um, and I had my son, um, I made sure that, um, I dedicated my life to him as far as giving my son what was never given to me, which was that love, that attention, that care. Um, and baseball, I believe is genetics. So I think he fell in love with it. So as soon as he fell in love with it, um, it was always our thing to do. Um, so baseball and being a dad is one of my two strongest points in life. Um, And I surround everything around it. So that's me. And uh, what position did you play when you played baseball? Oh, man, I play I play everything. Uh, But my best positions, like my my favorite position was third base. I'm a third baseman and a catcher. Um, I grew up maybe from six to I started playing at four, but you don't have a real catcher at about four. That's T-ball. Um, but you, that's usually where you hide probably one of the weakest players. And then when you start playing off of kid pitch, um, you start to, you mean, you, you put somebody back there that can catch a ball. So I started catching, I want to say maybe six years old, right after like T-ball till my freshman year in high school. And then I transitioned, um, from a catcher to a third baseman. And, um, I, I was a starting third baseman and then I would, I would fill in here and there like at second and shortstop. Um, later on, I, you mean, I learned how to play everything. Um, you mean, I, I believe that, um, you mean, if you're athletic, you can probably play everything. Yeah. So now, now I can play everything, but at growing up, I was a catcher and then high school, I was a third baseman. Um, that's my comfortable spot. If you ask me to go to a position, I'm going straight to third. That's, that's where I feel comfortable. Um, I know I'm good at third I'm, well I know I'm great at third but you I mean I'm pretty I'm pretty confident in every other position that I know I'll be able to do my job I mean that's the whole point is do your job to help the team win yeah so everything but my favorite position I'm a third baseman okay great well the hot corner <laughs> the hot corner um I to me to me it's too fast the balls are too fast at that point I like uh I like second base personally but uh <laughs> but let's talk about uh let, let's get into advice we're talking about um we're going to share some advice, some life advice. So why don't you get started? Why don't you get us started? Do you have any advice? Of course. Um, Well, you told me to pick five. Um, You mean, I, I, I have tons of advice, Um, but maybe the top five that stick in my head um, that I preach every day to these kids. If if you, if you notice right before we start training, um, I, I, I talk a lot during the warmups, during the, the stretches, um, and a lot is, is making them understand uh, what they're out here to do, why, why they're out here. Uh, one of the biggest things that I always say, and I always said to my son, because I was, I was basically taught it without being taught it, um, is control what you can control. You mean, um, and, and that's you being out here, control what you can control. And, and it leads to advice on the baseball field. It leads to advice in the classroom. It leads to advice in, in the real world is control what you can control. Um, you can't control your other teammates. And that's one thing that, you mean, I, I tell the parents all the time. I tell all my kids all the time is we can't control our, any other teammates. We don't know if they're out here. They're not, clearly they're not out here working with you. And we don't know if they're out there working on them individually to make them better um, at their position. So for example, if you're a second baseman, 
Um, make sure you field the ball every single time. Make sure you throw the ball to your first baseman, for your first baseman's chest every single time. Um, because we don't know if your first baseman's working. We don't know if they're working on their picks. We don't know if they're working on, on you mean, first base drills in general. Um, so, so there's no excuses as far as pointing fingers. Well, he didn't throw the ball right. Control what you can control. And that's you working hard every single day. Um, you know, you, you grinding, you focusing every day, you learning how to do your job. Um, and your job only, you know, you can't, you can never get in trouble if, you mean, if I make my play and I throw, you're, you're the second baseman and you, you, you make your play, you fill the ball, you throw it to my chest and I drop it, you can never get in trouble. Um, you mean the first baseman will. But if you throw it into the dirt and I can't pick it and you didn't throw it right now, we're both getting in trouble because you're supposed to make that play as far as doing your job. So one thing I always tell all of my players is control what you can control. And it's almost like the world of the day. You mean, like, there's no playing. There's nobody playing in any organized leagues or anything. But it doesn't mean that you you can't work. It doesn't mean that you don't do anything or you can't do anything. I can control what you can control. And that's get out on the field and work. So when everything does start up, you're ahead. You're, you're confident. You're doing your job. Um, and that's all that we can control is us individually every single day. So that's probably one of my biggest things that I preach to, you mean, a lot of my kids is control what you can control. And be the best you. The best you is going to be the best anything in this world, personally. Yeah. Uh, the best you. A lot of kids are so competitive. And I understand the competitive mindset when it comes to school, when it comes to sports, uh, when it comes to anything. You know, but what a lot of players have to understand is if they work on them and they're the best them, and you got to understand that we're out here to have fun, wherever, whatever we're doing, um, be the best you. The best you is going to be the best second baseman the best baseball player the best pitcher the best uh the best student the best employee the best friend the best spouse um and that's just focusing on you a lot of kids are so competitive um and they they're so young that they look up to or they look they look at other players and they want to be just like them not understanding that that kid probably has put in a lot more work um not saying just in general, like they woke up a lot. You I mean they they they've been on the field a lot longer, but let's just say at age span. You know, mine's eleven and yours is nine. Nine, yeah. Okay, so just that's just two two years of 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 a difference, and two years is a lot. You mean so yeah. that's why a lot of kids. You mean they'll look they'll look at other players and they start to like put themselves down, not understanding that 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 kid was just like you out one day. It's just that they kept on working. They controlled what they were able to control. And that was their daily grind, their daily routine, their daily structure. Um, and that's what they, they that's what, one thing that you mean, I always tell my kids is be the best you. Be the, that's what we're out here to do is being the best you. Because the best you, because I really believe that every kid is amazing within themselves, is going to be the best player on every team when they can find that out, when they can bring out the best them. Yeah. Uh, the best them is going to help every team win. I love you know, it. so so being the best you, um, controlling what you can control, uh, no matter you mean, and, and and the best you goes as far as uh, sports, baseball. It goes as far as school, um, and you take it into the real world. Whatever we're doing, be the best you. The best you is going to be the best whatever you choose to be in life. Yeah. Um, another thing I always say is um, I always give a hundred percent effort and hustle. A um, hundred percent effort and hustling. Um, you mean, and, and that's one thing that a lot of kids have to understand too, is, you mean, there's a lot of, you mean, natural talented kids who are, who are great naturally. Um, but you mean, if we can give that hundred percent every single time, you mean, we're able to, you mean, we're able to beat them with, you mean, with our effort. There's a lot of kids who are talented and they give no effort. There's a lot of kids who are talented and they know that they're talented. So they don't have to hustle. They feel that they don't have to hustle. Um, and one thing that we want to understand is we're not working for today. We're not working for a nine new all-star team. We're not working. We're not working to bring some, you mean, rings home that are, aren't going to fit us in two more years. Uh, we're working for the longevity of this game. We're working for, you mean, we're working for when it comes to high school, when it comes to those varsity trials, when it comes to, you mean, when it comes to uh, college uh, college trials, college scouts looking at us, when it comes to major league scouts looking at us. Yeah. When we get there, coaches coaches are expecting the best, and they're expecting that kid who's always giving that 100% effort and hustling without, having, without them having to be told. 
Um, and those are the kids who are going to survive in this game. Those are the kids who um, are, are going to who are going to make it just because coaches are are that's what they're looking for. They're looking for that 100 percent effort every single time. And the same thing when they get into the classroom, the same thing when they get into the world world. Uh, their managers, their, 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 you mean the CEO of the company, whoever, whatever they're doing, whoever they're working for, um, you mean they're, they're going to bring that to the table as far as giving a hundred percent effort every single day, being on time, you mean being the first one there, being the last one gone, um, always hustling, you mean always doing your job, um, you mean the right way, but always doing it, you mean, um, you mean as far as in, in a demeanor that, you mean, you got to make sure that we have to do this job so we can get on to the next one. You mean, so you mean being the best to you, controlling what you can control, yeah. um, always giving that effort, always giving um, 100% hustle. I love, I love that. Um, uh, yeah, because it reminds me of uh, in, in the NBA basketball. When you, uh, when you have seven-foot tall players get drafted, a lot of times they don't turn out well because they've never had to try because that's the only thing they could possibly do is play basketball. And so they never, it was never in their heart. They were never giving it, 1000%. Whereas somebody like Kobe, obviously he's really talented. He had to try, he had to learn, he had to mm -hmm. hustle, he had to put in his work all the time. And so, you know, no, nothing. I mean, even at six, six, you're not guaranteed NBA. Right. Uh, but at right. seven, two, you're guaranteed NBA. It's just a matter of, are you going to become the greatest? Or are you just going to make the NBA? You know, that's why another reason I think a lot of players after this, like in the major leagues or in professional sports, that first salary, and then they stop because they've never, they never loved it. They never were trying. They got comfortable, yeah. Yeah, they never wanted to be the best. They never, and, or, you know, I know a lot of, one of my, one of my really close friends, he's like, he's really, he's like a foot taller than me, a hundred pounds heavier, and he's like an athlete, but he never, he was, it always came so easily, like you talked about. So he never put in the work, never tried, never. So then he maxed out in high school because he, at that point, everybody's at his level. But, you know, right. to get to that, he could have made it, he could have made the, you know, a professional sport for sure, but he just never had that that drive and momentum. Whereas, like somebody like me, who's five feet tall, you know, and has like it's like a hundred pounds. I had to I had to put in a thousand percent in order to even get on that field. You know, so I always mm. joke I always joke with that guy that I was like, if you had my mentality and I had your body, you would be a hall of famer. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. And, and, and you know, one thing too is 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 at one point, everybody's going to, you mean, every, you can teach, you can teach talent, but you can't teach that. You can't teach that hustle. You can't teach that effort after a certain time. That's yeah. why it's important to teach them so young. It becomes part of their, their, their nature it becomes part of their, their habit as far as always hustling station to station. Um, there's a difference. We're not trying to, you mean, as far as all-star teams, of course, you mean the best you on that player is going to be the best, even the best all-star player. Realistic. I can, I can, tell you stories for days firsthand stories um and then but realistically we're, we're we're trying to make that varsity team our freshman year you know so you got to remember a lot of a lot of kids there there a lot of them you can teach the talent but you can't teach i mean you can you, you can you can teach talent but you can't teach that effort you can't teach that 100 percent when you're trying out for that varsity team like coaches don't have time to teach you coaches don't have time to lecture you coaches don't have time to remind you you I mean when they when we're shagging balls like they're expecting like Balls quick, quick, quick. Uh, we got to get we got to get another batter in. And if you're over there like lagging it, no matter how talented you are, you're cut, bro. <laughs> like yeah. because we can teach that player who is giving that hundred percent effort how to catch a ball. We can teach them how to hit. We can teach them how to field. We can teach them how to throw. Um, but we can't teach you how to give that hundred percent effort. We can't teach you how to hustle at a certain point. Yeah. You know, because then it just be, it's it's some it's a habit. It's a it's a it's in their nature. So that's why it's important to teach them so young. So when they get there. You mean that hard work and that 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 hard work that 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 hustling, is, that talent is gonna be daddy ball every single day. Um, it's gonna beat the politics. Um, it's gonna be, and a lot of the politics come with players who are good. You mean players who are good? Who, you mean, parents have some way somehow um, got them into whatever program. Your hustle, your effort. Um, and your talent, you mean being the best you is going to beat that kid any single day. Yeah. You mean, that's why it's important to like install those so young as far as the effort and the hustling. And I always tell players all the time, like, I'm not telling you to hustle for me, bro. I'm telling you to hustle for you. You'll thank me in 10 years. You mean <laughs> like, coach, yeah. through, 
I, yeah, I'm, the reason why I made the team, the reason why I made the team is because you said I'm always hustling. I'm always like I'm giving 100 percent effort every single time. I'm always focusing. You know, so it's those little things that matter realistically. Yeah. And my the best advice I ever got in my career because I'm a writer producer, um, and I remember that I was uh, I was working for this uh, really famous writer, and I was uh, at the time I was writing everything. I was writing poems. I was writing books. I was writing movies. I was writing all these things. And he told me that you know because you have some kind of talent, you're good at all of those, but you're not great at any of them. And he said that there's this guy in a basement who's writing every single hour, every sec, every single second, working on screenplays, just screenplays. And at the end of the day, he's going to become better than you because you're focused on all these other things. And he's all like, only way you can become a great writer is to, for me to focus, pick one, do it, do it every second, do it all the time and become great at it. And then I can mess around with other stuff. But, uh, but that was, that was probably the, one of the most important advice I got, because at that point I stopped writing anything else. I focused on writing movies and, you know, I, every job I took, everything I did was around writing. And I think it really helped me become kind of what you but it talked it was, but what he was really telling me is what you're telling me which is give the effort try my hardest go for it all stop messing around and doing other stuff and you know and it really like it made my career but uh but I'd love, love to hear your next piece of advice what's your next piece of advice well you mean not only that too but you got to also remember you got to this is what I always tell my players too this is why we're always hustling this is why we're always giving 100% effort um is because when they're on that field a lot of a lot of kids complain that you mean they're not given opportunities um, they didn't make the all-star team because they're not liked. Uh, parents even start start believing in that. You know I mean, but what they don't understand too is what these kids have to understand. And I remind them all the time. I remind them all the time is mom and dad aren't the only ones looking at you. You know I mean, we're always watching as parents. Like, you mean, you're a parent. You know I mean, you're always, you're always watching to Cal's every move in the dugout, on the field, making sure he's paying attention for his safety, for other people's safety. Uh, making sure um, he's not goofing around. You mean just the little things as parents, things that you mean as parents or parent instincts, we're always watching our kids. That's one thing we always do is we're always watching our kids. And I always remind these kids too is, is mom and dad aren't the only ones watching you. Like, you mean when coaches turn around and coaches are, are working with another group, that's not your opportunity to start goofing around. That's not your opportunity to start um, unzipping your teammates' hats. That's not your opportunity to start chipping people. That's not your opportunity to, you mean, start dropping, you mean, inappropriate words when no one's looking. Because you got to remember, like, someone's always watching you. And that goes as far as now, like, as an adult, like that. You I mean, how many times have you driven on the freeway and you've seen someone pick their nose? Like, <laughs> someone's always watching you, realistically. Yeah. You know, like, they're always watching you. And a lot of these kids have to understand, like, you know, I used to be a coach. You mean, I used to coach all the way till my son was seven years old. Um, and one thing as a coach is, one, as a baseball player, is I love the game. I'll go watch any team, any players, uh, no matter how young you are, how bad you are, how good you are. You mean, I just love the game. You know, and one thing as a, as a, as a you mean, as a coach, and I, I, I ran the all-star teams, uh, you know, usually the, you mean the, whoever takes the first place team or like the best coach gets like nominated to take the all-star team, like manage the all-star team. So I, I would, I got picked like two years in a row. And then um, one thing that I would do as a coach was I, ha I had to understand that I had to start watching players that I didn't know. You know what I mean? Cause obviously clearly I wasn't going to take the 12 that were on my team when only two or three of them were really good, or maybe one or two of them were really good. You mean, because come all-star season, you're trying to win. Realistically, we're trying to win. So what coaches are doing is we don't know who coaches are. Same thing. You mean, and it goes, it, it, this is going to lead all the way to every level that we're ever going to get to. Let's just say now, you want to make an all-star team, bro. Like, you got to remember, all-star coaches are looking at you, and you don't know who is the all-star coach sometimes. You mean, like, I didn't go around announcing, like, yo, bro, I'm the all-star coach, and I'm here looking at your player. <laughs> First off, I'm watching the game. You mean, and if I see, like, yo, bro, like, that little kid, like, he's not, he can't catch the ball, but he's making that effort every single time. Like, that's noted in somebody's head. It's noted that, like, yo, bro, like, if he keeps giving that effort, eventually he's going to make that play. You mean, rather than the kid who has all the talent, that's just like, oh, well, it wasn't next to me, so I didn't try. You mean, those are little things like, yo, bro, we can't take that. We can't have that in the All-Star game, bro. Like, you're out of the game. You mean, a lot of kids have to understand, too, like, that's why we're always giving that 100% effort because we don't know who's watching us. Same yeah. thing when we get to when we get to high school. 
like we don't know who's a college scout sometimes in that stands. You might think it's co somebody's cousin, somebody's brother, somebody's uncle, somebody's dad. And little do you know, it's a scout. And you over there like goofing around, throwing your bat after a strikeout, throwing your helmet, throwing a tantrum. You mean dropping an F-bomb, um, you know, uh, 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 you mean talking to somebody in the stands when coach isn't paying attention. You mean it's the little things like that. And what, that's, that's, the, that's the part that we have to understand, too, is somebody's always watching you. That's why we always want to give that 100% effort. That's why we always want to hustle. Because yeah. we don't know who's watching us. You guys want to make that all-star team? Well, bro, start impressing your coaches when nobody's watching. And a lot of times they think, well, if I only try when you're watching, then that's what matters. And realistically, sometimes those coaches aren't anything on that team. You I mean, yeah, they'll probably have a say in a, in a meeting at the end of the year as far as who they believe are good players. But, you mean, my eyes don't lie to me. So yeah. if I go and I watch a game and I know, like, yo, bro, like, this dude's always positive this dude is always giving 100 percent effort this dude's always hustling he's always picking up his teammates you know those are the things that coaches are looking for yeah and this this is like uh this is something that i had to teach to cow as well i think uh when we were when we were uh doing you're right there cow's right listening to me so uh, <laughs> but like um i remember during we went to we, he does brazilian jiu-jitsu as well as baseball and I remember that we went to tournaments and tournaments, you know, they're, they're trying to kill you, right? They're going faster. They're, they're, you don't know them. And I remember talking to him about having to like, like looking at him in practice and seeing him messing around in practice, seeing him not taking it seriously and then going to tournament and trying to win. And that's, those two things don't work because if you're taking practice, not seriously, you can't, you can't win at a tournament. So, you know, talking to him right. about explaining like that, if you want to, if you want to win, you got to have that attitude in practice. You got to come with that. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take you down. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna submit you, right now. Mm -hmm. And then that, that practice when, and like you said, nobody's watching. Nobody knows. Nobody cares. This is just a practice on a Monday night, right? But, mm -hmm. but if he wants to win on a Sunday, he's got to get that attitude. He's got to get that start with practice. And then before practice, after practice, you can mess around. You got to fun. But during that during that time, you need exactly. to you need to focus. You need to work, and you can't you can't mess around. Yeah, and, and it's not a not as soon as the yeah not as soon as the coach turns around. Let me build a sand cap, a dirt castle. Yeah, exactly. And then that next coach is watching, and he's like, "Yo, bro, every time I yeah. turn around, are you gonna build a dirt castle?" Yeah, but you even know, every I, time yeah. I turn around. Yeah, but even I think it's I, I think it's also just attitude, like understanding, like you can It's hard to just turn it on, right? It's hard just to be like, "I'm gonna be good now because I know people are watching me." It's easier to be just have that. 100% attitude all the time when you're doing Correct. your job and you know and, and just just doing what you can like you said doing what you can how you can do it and then whatever happens happens but you know but I think that's why we have to install that so young yeah. it, it's so then it could turn into muscle memory yeah. then it could turn into muscle memory because I think out of habit kid kids you know they, they start messing around when no one's looking yeah. so you know that that's you mean as a, as a dad you mean my son I always tell my son bro I'm always watching you I'm <laughs> either I'm watching you or somebody I know is watching you. So there's always eyes on you, bro. Yeah. You know, and, and there's times where, like, I'll pull up to a game um, and they're stretching out or they're warming up. Like, I purposely stay in my car and watch him to make sure, like, yo, bro, are you doing everything you're supposed to do? Like, when, you're, when you know that I'm not there, but little do you know I'm watching you right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you could easily be lying to me and be like, yeah, dad, I'm always hustling. I'm always doing this. And then you mean you're doing otherwise, you know. So that's that's one thing that you mean one one thing I've always I've always installed in him. And it's it's an everyday process. It's an everyday process. It's like brushing your teeth. You know what I mean you have to install it. You got to install it, and then you got to remind them daily. Someone's always watching you. Give a hundred percent effort. You know what I mean so the one day they they don't, they they want to slack may be the one day that somebody's important is really watching them. You know. Yeah. So that, I think I think it could be installed. It's just we have to install it daily, yeah. especially when they're young right now, yeah, especially when they're young. I agree. I think that that's a, that's a really, really important thing. I mean, it, even in jujitsu, you know, when you face – because a lot of times when you face somebody bigger and stronger, you, you automatically get hyped because you're going to try to hurt – you're going to try to win this, this match. But a lot of times it's the smaller kids who are fast and flexible that are going to take you down. And if you're just with this attitude like, oh, I got this, like then, then you're going to get – you're gonna get um, you get hurt, but uh, but anyway, yeah. What's your what's your next piece of advice? Do you have another piece of advice? Um, well, be the best you. Um, always give a hundred percent. No girls, 
<laughs> I always say no girls, no girls. Um, it, it, it's it's because we got to focus. We this this game is something that we have to focus in. Yeah. And at a young age, girls can make you lose a lot of focus. Yeah. Um, you mean we we can go from practicing every day, being on the field. You mean an hour before a regular practice and an hour after a regular practice. Um, and then here comes a girl and all of a sudden we're walking her home and, and we're, we, <laughs> we're, we fall off the track of what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, I tell mine all the time, it, you mean, it's okay to, you mean, to, it's okay. You mean, we live in a life where we see it all the time. We watch any show they're going to kiss any, you mean, we can't even hide it nowadays, yeah. you know, like even some of my favorite shows growing up, like the French Prince of Ballet, like, you mean. Uncle Phil and Will, they're 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 preaching some pretty good advice in those shows, you know. I think those are my father figures growing up. A lot of a lot of old school shows were basically my guidance. Yeah. Um, but even even there, like, you know, my son loves the French Prince of Bel Air. You mean he's a he's a big uh you mean Will Smith fan. But even Will Smith on the show, he's a little player, you know? Yeah. So there's times where I'm like, oh shit, he's making out with the girl. I can't be like, yo, close your eyes, you know? It's there. You mean, yeah. but one thing we have to make them understand too is, is there's girls everywhere in this world, yeah. you know, and, and we grew up, we grew up, in, you mean, in, in a small city, no matter where you're from, we think those are the only girls or whatever, like around in this world. And now we're older. You mean, we're in our thirties now and we understand that. And, and if you've traveled outside of your city, outside of your state, outside of your country, you realize there's girls everywhere in this world. Um, so no girls, uh, uh, accomplish, <laughs> accomplish your goals. Wait, wait let, let, let me, let me uh, respond to your no girls. I, I think that's totally, that's like the best advice I've ever heard because uh, the one thing I will, I will add those, once you achieve your dreams, it's easier, well, to, get, yeah, it's, it's uh, easier to get girls then. <laughs> well, I'm not stay single forever. No, 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 no. But, but, but the point is that like, if you work really hard, exactly, you keep working, exactly. that, like, it's actually like when you're 16 and you have nothing going for you and you're, you're awkward and weird and you have nothing, like nobody wants to talk to you. But once you have, once you, once you're successful and you have, you know, you, you have confidence in yourself, then, then you can get anybody you want. It's not a problem. Cur all Right. Yeah, correct. Or, or or look at it this way. What if you're 16, okay, and you really do have um, a lot of opportunities on, on the table for you? What if you really are a great student? What if you really are a good athlete, okay? What if you really are getting looked at, at from D1 colleges, D2 colleges at 16 years old, okay? We have a mindset that we understood and we understand what it takes to get to this moment, okay? But what if you meet another 16 year old girl who doesn't have that mindset? Yeah. You mean, realistically, that's dead weight, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's dead weight. Yeah. She don't have the same grind as you. She don't understand. Yeah. Yo, bro, like an extra 30 minutes in the cages is, is, is something that I need rather than like, really, you can't hang out with me or whatever the case <laughs> is. Like, you mean it, it can be dead weight. And I always tell, I tell my son this, um, I tell, I don't really tell my younger kids this because, you know, they're, they're, they're still too young to even install girlfriend in their mind. Um, but I mean, like my junior high kids all the way to my college kids. Um, you mean, I have, I have players who come in and mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, they'll message me right before like an individual training. My individual private trainings, we don't do with the clinics, obviously. I'm not going to have a 16-year-old with a nine-year-old. Yeah. Um, so those older kids, we have to do one-on-ones. So one thing I always say is, is always give 100% in whatever you're doing, right? No matter yeah. what you do, no matter what, if, if you love it, if you like it, give it 100%. And it, you mean, so at the end of the day, like, we don't have any regrets or any, any doubts of what if I gave 100%, would I have been able to make it? You know, at least you know you gave 100%. Yeah. So whenever I work with a kid, and you mean, let's just say I have a 9 a.m., um, a, a 9 a.m. one-on-one with a 15 year old um and grandma grandma messages me or grandpa messages me or mom and dad message me and they're like hey coach we're on our way uh sorry so and so um so and so woke up late uh because he was on the phone all night till three in the morning talking to so and so right so a lot of these kids, they really do respect me. Um, I think it's more because I'm still kind of young to them. Yeah. You know, I'm still kind of hip to them. So I, I have that, I, I can get that comfort level out of them. Um, but one thing that I do is if I have a 9 a.m. with you, okay, 
I'm going to give you 100% straight up. So I'm falling asleep by like 10 o'clock. I don't care if that 9 a.m. is on a Sunday morning or a Saturday morning. I'm going to sleep Friday night or Saturday night at 10 o'clock because I'm going to give my best of that day. I mean, that's why like my son, like he structures is everything. Okay. So on even now, like even during summer, um, you mean summer is when any kid can stay up to all nighters. They both all nighters. You know how many kids I know like that? Tons of them. And I get so upset like internally. Cause it's like, bro, why are you allowing this? Like, then you're going to like, then you're going to complain when come September and they don't want to wake up anymore because you allowed them to bust on nighters from June to August, you know? <laughs> so one thing that I do is, is I don't care if it's the summer. I don't care if you're on Christmas break. Um, I don't care if we don't have anything to do the next day. Like, bro, you're going to sleep at 10 o'clock. You know, you're going to sleep at nine o'clock, even on a Saturday, even on a Sunday, even on a Friday. You know what I mean? Because I expect that hundred percent the whole time. And I, I don't want no excuses as far as I'm tired. I didn't get enough sleep last night. So a lot of times I get these kids that come in and they're tired because they were talking to their girlfriend all night. And I don't, you mean, come and be like, yo, bro, why, why, why are you tired? You look tired and interrogate them and make them like back up because we're trying to, we're trying to gain that mental confidence because mental confidence leads to physical confidence. Yeah. So if I have you all distraught mentally, you're going to like physically not perform as good. So I'd be like, yo, bro, like, let's just say like 20 minutes into the workout. And I'm like, yo, bro, like you seem a little like, a little behind right now like are you okay and they still look at me like i'm pretty young you know I, I, you mean my older kids i'll play some hip-hop i'll play rap I'll always like yo bro what do you want to listen to um you mean so we can get in that in, in the vibe in the mode and so they'll be like post malone or something so you could tell they're hip they're younger they're hip so they look at me because obviously clearly i know the songs too so I, I start rocking my head or something and they'll be like yeah i was talking on the phone with my girlfriend till three o'clock and I look at him and I was like, bro, like, when you come work with me, like, I need 100% effort. And all I'm doing is just installing that, that structure, just installing that routine. And I even remind them, like, yo, bro, like, I went to sleep at 10 o'clock last night. I was asleep by 9 o'clock. So I can wake up early and give you my best. So I expect your best. And I always say this, you mean, then it leads into the girlfriend. And I'll be like, yo, bro, break up with her. I'll be the first one that's going to break your heart. You guys ain't going to be together. You guys, you mean, I'll be the first one to break your heart right now, but you'll thank me later yeah. for being like, yo, coach, thank you for, you mean, you mean, not, not letting me allow to carry this relationship or whatever. And one thing I always say is like, yo, bro, there's girls at a homeless shelter and there's girls at Harvard. You let me know which one you want. Yeah. Because it, it's easy to get the girl in the homeless shelter. You just don't got to do nothing. But if you work your butt off and you do everything you're supposed to do in the classroom, on the field, you're going to meet somebody who's on your level and it's not going to be dead weight. She's going to understand the, the, the study structure, the study routine, the practice routine, the sleeping routine. No, girl, I can't, I can't stay up with you till two in the morning. I got to go to bed because I have practice in the morning. I have a game in the morning. You mean, but when she's on that same level as you, she understands it. And a lot of times, that's why I say, like, I tell my son, I said, look, bro, there's girls at a homeless shelter, there's girls at Harvard. Let's do what we need to do. Let's accomplish what we need to accomplish. I said, and bro, like, when we get to our first goal, let's just, our goal was the major leagues. When we get to our goal, bro, girls are everywhere, I promise you. And I was like, I'll get one for me and you at that point. <laughs> but right now, let's focus. Right now, let's focus. Um, you mean no girls? You mean you get you get kids nowadays because technology and social media. You know, I I my TikTok is full of younger younger my younger kids, and you mean clearly I follow at least my players back, and I have kids from all over the world, and you mean and I see them posting and they're they're dancing, they're doing the same dances the the adults are doing, just at a at a younger version. I mean, you have kids as, as old as the cow, like, dancing with his shirt off, like, biting their lip. And I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Like, what, what are you doing? Like, 
And so, you mean, then that's, that's one thing I always say is no girls. Like, no girls. It's not cute. It's not funny. You mean, I don't play this, this, I don't play matchmaker. I don't play fake, fake. Oh, that's going to be your, your girlfriend in the future. I don't play any, because we don't want to, we just don't want their minds to get curious. And then once it gets curious, they lose track, you know? So, you mean, one thing I install was no girls, bro. There's girls in a homeless shop and there's girls at Harvard. Do what you got to do and you'll, you'll, you'll meet another, you're going to be successful. The last thing you want to do is have dead weight. That's going to like pull you back from the success that we're trying to reach rather than when you get to Harvard at the end of the day, like, let's just say things don't work out, bro. She leaves you alone. Cause she got her own stuff going on. She has her own money. She has her own success. Yeah. She doesn't need you. She doesn't need you. She's not going to, you mean, uh, you mean try to take everything you have from you. Cause if you're successful, Say you're the, you're the dude and I, I'm the girl and you're successful and I'm not. What's the first thing I'm doing? I'm going after all your assets. I'm going after all your money. You paying me. You're paying. You're paying me this. You're paying me that. <laughs> um, rather than somebody who has her own, you guys just yeah. wash your hands and be like, "Yo, bro, peace out. I'm gone." Um, you mean so that's that's one thing. You mean that's another thing too. It's just no girls, no girls too. Love, yeah. You mean after you after we accomplish what we're trying to accomplish, after we accomplish our ultimate goal. You mean after that ultimate goal, then you'll have that, like, you mean that you'll have that structure. And by that time, every girl's going to understand if I want to be with you, like, I got to let you work. I got to let you practice. I got to let you study. I got to let you go to bed early. You know, yeah. I got to, I got to let you wake up on time. I got to make sure that you give a hundred percent rather than someone who's selfish, you know, someone who's selfish that doesn't understand that mindset, that routine, you mean that of what we're trying to accomplish and then it, it, it then they give you ultimatums you know and that's just dead weight that's just yeah, like, dead weight for the future yeah like in my career um when i was dating i remember i take girls to the premieres with me right a premiere my premiere or something and i remember thinking like they would be really impressed by that and then they'd be like what are you doing tomorrow night and i'm like i'm writing what are you doing the next night i'm i'm writing what do you think that mm -hmm. I'm writing? You know, like, because how do I get to that premiere was I had to work every night all the time. I don't have time to go on a date. I don't have time to mess around and go to a movie with you. Like, I'm, I'm working. What are we going to talk about when we go on the next date? It's going to be about my writing because I'm, that's mm. what I'm focused on. You know, and I remember people being like, a lot of the girls being, they couldn't handle that because they wanted me to circle my life around their things. And I'm like, that's not how it works. I do my thing. You do your thing. And when we have time, we hang out. But you know, like I remember that being really hard for people. So, so I love, I love the advice of, of no girls. Uh, I think that's, an awesome, that's a great piece of advice. All right. Well, what's, what's your, do you have one more or two more? Um, always work hard when no one's looking. Um, and, and, and a lot of that is behind closed doors. I want it on the practice field. A lot of kids, um, because when they are looking, yeah. We're taking advantage of all their opportunities and having fun. Um, and that's what a lot of kids don't understand is they think that, you mean, I'm going to go to the game and I'm going to perform and I'm going to do great. Uh, work hard when nobody's looking. And you mean, a lot of these kids are like, well, why am I practicing? Why am I doing this? You know, like they're not seeing, they're not seeing it themselves just yet until they realize like when they get on the field and everybody is looking, you're doing your job. Like you're making your plays, you're getting your base hits. You know, um, and you're taking advantage of all the opportunities and kids, kids, parents, you mean, they're always complaining that my kid doesn't get any opportunities that like, bro, like practice is an opportunity. Your, 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 you warming up is your opportunity. You getting, you know, you getting those, the, the ground balls from the first baseman is an opportunity um, to show your coach like that. You, you mean to show your coach, you can do your job. So work hard when nobody's looking. So when everybody is looking, you take advantage of every opportunity. I love that. I think that's, that's awesome advice. Yeah. Cause I think the habits you build are the habits that when you need it really come through. Right. When you, when you really Correct. need to, when you need to win, when you need to be in baseball, if you're making, if you're, if you're messing around and you're not getting the grounders, it's, it's hard to make that same play when it's the bottom of the ninth inning or whatever, when you're, you know, when you need to make that play, you're going to, you're going to mess up that play, you know? Um, exactly. But I think that, that that's really, really great advice. And, and, you know, one of my big pet peeves with, with you know, for writers, for example, because teach writing as well, is that a lot of people talk about writing, but they never actually do it. And, you know, it's like the same thing in sports. Like, I know a lot of parents who talk about their kids being amazing, but they never, they never have their kids work. 
but they never mm-hmm. like they're just like oh, yeah they, we play soccer on saturdays you know and wednesday nights of practice and that's it they never they never kick the ball or or when i was a coach i remember you know you know the, the parents would get mad at me because their kids couldn't catch the ball and i'm like well what are you doing on monday tuesday thursday friday <laughs> I'm like what are you doing on sunday when there's yeah. no game like are you just you know you expect me to teach him in 30 minutes how to, to catch a ball you know, like I'm, I would think I'm throwing him golf balls to help, you know, like for us to like learn how to catch, for him to learn how to catch at the time, you know, it's, and it's still, you still aren't good at it. You still need practice. You still need practice it, you know, and, exactly. and I just think too many parents are just like, oh, he should be able to catch now. I'm like, no, you can't catch in 30 minutes in a baseball practice or in a exactly. game, right? Like how many times you get hit a ball in a game, like twice and you know, like three times and you're not, unless you're like a first baseman or something. But even then, you know, if that's the only time you're practicing catching, you're not going to catch that ball. I guarantee you. Exactly. And, and and this game's fun, but it's not fun. You mean it's not fun when you're messing up and you're making errors and you can't hit, you know? Yeah. Um, and that and that's the part that we have to understand is that's why we work hard when no one's looking. That that's yeah. the part of understanding the game. Uh when we are when we are practicing behind closed doors is we're understanding it. And then it becomes a lot easier. So then when we do get on that field, not only are we taking you mean advantage of those opportunities because it's still not a job. Yep. But you're having fun and you just so happen to be taking advantage of all those opportunities while having fun because it's a lot easier. Yeah. You know what I mean? You I'm- understand, you understand you're at bat, you understand your fielding, you understand how to throw the ball, you understand how to catch the ball. You know, so it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to do whatever job you're doing, whatever position you're doing. Um, it's a lot easier to hit. Um, and then it's a lot more fun because it's fun to if you if you play this game, your son plays this game. It's fun when you can get on the pitcher's mound and throw strikes consistently. That's what a pitcher is. A pitcher is somebody who can throw strikes consistently. Yeah. And it reminds me of no, the – oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, it just reminds me of the 2008 Olympics um, with the basketball where Kobe Bryant, he would practice before practice. He'd practice after practice. And I remember LeBron James, uh, Dwayne Wade, and Kevin Durant, they, they saw Kobe doing this. And mm-hmm. in the beginning, Kobe was the only one doing it. By the end of the, in the, in the Olympics, all of them were doing it. And I think it's not a coincidence that all three of those players became. They took that's it to when the they next, won gold, right? That's when they well, that's when they took it to the next level as players themselves too. Was that okay. they realized that in order to become Kobe Bryant level successful, they needed to put in that kind of work because all three are right. obviously they're super talented monsters, right? But but I think you know seeing what Kobe did, seeing that Kobe got up at four to shoot around, and by the time eight o'clock practice was, he he'd been in the gym for four hours, and then after right. practice he was still shooting. And LeBron seeing that, he realized that he needed, in order for him to become the greatest or second greatest or whatever he is, he needed to he needed to put in that kind of work because people like Kobe were out there putting in that kind of work to become a champion, right? And when nobody's right. looking, nobody's watching you at four o'clock practice, nobody's watching right. you at five o'clock practice, just over and over and over, right? And I think that 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 was one of the biggest legacies of Kobe Bryant was that that teaching these these next level, the next generation of stars, what it took to become a champion. And and that's 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 what that would that's what determines a leader from the rest of the pack too. Yeah. I mean that's what determines the leader, and, and that's what we all want to be as a leader because yeah. the leader on every team, the the captain on every team, the leader on every team is basically the best player on every team. You mean the best player on every team who is who makes the all star team? Okay, you got to remember. It, it, let's look at it when you're younger. You mean there's say twelve. 13 positions in a all, well at least spots in a in a in a youth all-star team okay nine nine playing and three on the bench or whatever or four on the bench if you want to get a little carried away um not all 12 players from every team make the make the team it's it's the best players from every team who makes the all-star team same thing when we get to high school same thing with to college like colleges don't give those scholarships out to the whole team you're not going to get like you mean uh, you mean a, a scholarship for San Marino? It's 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 one player individually who's getting that one scholarship from whatever university that you mean that's giving them that scholarship. So and it's the leader on every team. The best player is the leader on every single team. And I think you mean that's something that Kobe taught players how to do is become those leaders. They're always great players and leaders in their own ways, but leaders don't talk and they don't tell you what to do they show you what to do yeah. you mean and that's why you mean here at you mean when, when I train kids and I always tell them like like you mean we want to be a leader like leaders are the best players on every team like and I'm not saying like oh okay I know what I'm doing so every time someone messes around like I'm gonna just tell them like oh don't do that 
you got to show them by example, like, yo, bro, if you hustle, they'll hustle. Be a leader. Be the leader on the team. Yeah. So then when you get your, to your team, you're naturally that leader. You're the, you're the dude. You're the only dude who knows, boy or girl, who knows what they're doing, yeah. how to do it. They're all, you mean, it, it leads back to the hustling and giving the 100% effort. You mean, and that's the, that's the leader on every team. You know what I think? I think that's what, what Kobe always was, was that leader. And he, I think he just installed it. You know, he installed it, you mean, better in those players who, under, yeah. who understood, like, my talent isn't going to just take me to that next level. You mean, it's the leadership as far as being, you mean, in the, you mean, being in, being on court, you mean, being, being in the gym at four in the morning when regular practice starts at six, you know? Exactly. That's one thing, too, is, is you got to lead by example. You mean, be the first one out there. It's easy to be like, yo, guys get to the gym at four in the morning but if you ain't doing it they ain't gonna do it but if they see you doing it you yeah. mean monkey see monkey do realistically and uh don't be a sheep you mean don't be a sheep uh uh don't be weak you know the 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 the, the strong eat the weak you know and realistically be be the lion don't be the the gazelle at the end of the day um don't you mean don't be a sheep and be like well if they're not doing it i'm not doing it yeah. be the be the leader bro be the one who who gets out there and does it and then you'll have the sheep follow you and they'll turn into lions yeah hopefully <laughs> well thank you so much for coming on what can you tell can you tell everyone who's watching or listening uh a, a little bit about what you do with the kids and how they could get in uh, contact with you or, or follow you uh what i do with the kids is um i strengthen all the kids weaknesses um i if you mean my biggest thing is is i love this sport and i love I love baseball and I love my son to the point where I believe, um, you mean, you should teach this game the right way and they should experience it the right way without the politics, without them disliking this game. This game is too beautiful, at least for me, what it's done for me. It's, it's, it's saved my life. You mean, like I said, I was a, I was a foster child growing up uh, with limited guidance, with limited positive guidance. So knowing that, knowing what this game has done for me, um, what my job is to do is guide these kids through this with this ball um, and, 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 and strengthening their weaknesses, teaching them how to be the best them, teaching them how to have their own confidence, have to have, how to have their own goals, dreams, and visions, um, making sure that they learn how to do their job. So when they get on a team, just for example, let's just say you coach a team. Um, you mean my biggest goal is to have the 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, players who aren't playing or who are playing the outdoor positions and they feel that they're not so good. Um, experience this game at another level as far as being good. Having fun. Having fun is the most important part of this game. Is, and when you have fun, it's because you know how to do your job. Um, and then players who are already good, take them to the next level. Take them to the next level as far as not only making the all-star team because that's one of the ultimate goals, but being also being the best player on that all-star team. Uh, being the best player on every team that you get on. So you mean building each kid's confidence, building their self-esteem, uh, building goals, dreams, and visions within a kid. Um, that's super important. Uh, baseball, um, you mean it, it can lead you to, it can lead you to, if you want to play in the major leagues, you mean the American way is we got to go to college. Uh, we got to, in order to go to college, we got to go to, we got to, we got to, in order to go to the pros, we got to be in college. In order to go to the college, we got to go to high school. Well, in order to go to high school and get into a good high school or whatever the case is, like, we got to start focusing on education now. We got to start focusing on the structure and routine now. Um, you mean, so, so guiding them in, in a direction where this game, it, it can take you away from the negativity as far as gangs, uh, as far as, um, uh, drugs, alcohol, gangs, uh, jail or death, you know, and, and that's ultimately, that's a reality of, of the world that we live in. So that's, you mean, one thing that as far as, um, is, as far as that guidance, the guidance is, is, is super important, is being guided by somebody positive, being guided uh, by something positive that's going to give you uh, future visions as far as knowing or wanting to do something with your life. Um, so my job is just to teach you how to play this game really good, where you build your own confidence, your own self-esteem. And our ultimate goal for all of our kids is for them to be successful and whatever they choose to do in life. Success is everywhere. Success isn't just on the baseball field. It's in a classroom. It's in any, any job, anything you want to do in life is if you give your best, you never give up. You're always positive. You're always giving hundred percent effort. You know, you, you, everything that we just mentioned, 
You mean there's no reason why what you learned on the field isn't going to make you successful in anything that you want to do. As much as we all want our kids to play in the MLB, um, you mean, and you mean that's all possible. But at the end of the day, we want our kids to be successful. And you mean that that's the ultimate goal is, is for our kids to understand the structure, the routine, um, just the fundamentals of, of understanding your mindset. You mean understanding what to do that is going to lead you to any type of success you want to do as far as, you mean, we, we just want our kids to be successful. And yeah. you mean, our ultimate goal is for, you mean, the guidance, positive guidance. Uh, you mean, opening up those goals, dreams, and visions for our kids um, and learning how to be the best them. And, you mean, my job out here is to, you mean, it, it's almost like a blueprint. I give them a blueprint of what every coach is expecting, um, at, at what levels they're expecting it. Um, you mean, what, you mean what, every, what every coach, what every organization is looking for. So that's, you mean, that's our ultimate goal here is, is to understand how to be the best you, um, you mean, how to come in here and do your job. And you mean, you mean, be the best baseball players, be the best baseball players, be the best them and, and start building those visions, building those visions in our kids. So when they are older and at the end of the day, when we got to let go of their hands and they enter the real world, um, they're making good decisions. They're making good yeah. choices because those decisions and choices that we make today are going to be the outcome of tomorrow in the future. So you run, and so just to be clear, you can run baseball clinics, uh, private lessons, camps, all of that. Um, so yeah, can, baseball, exactly. Baseball hitting clinics. Um, I mean, hitting is hitting is something that all kids love to do. If you're not hitting, you're sitting. You I mean that's a that's an old <laughs> saying. Yeah. You I mean so I do I do my hitting clinics Monday through Friday. Um, I do um, fielding clinics, so it's an hour of fielding and an hour of um, hitting on Saturdays. And then I do, I do my private individual trainings. Um, a lot of those are with like, uh, say like m maybe more of elite players or more of the players who need more of the one-on-one -on -one or my older players. Our ultimate goal for our older players is to get them looked at, get them into, first get them onto a varsity team and second yeah. get them looked at, get them looked at from colleges. I mean, once you can start having those positive visions, it makes you make positive decisions today. Yeah. And how can people uh, follow you or how can people get more information? Uh, my, my Instagram is the real dad underscore coach. Uh, my Facebook is Angel S. Ramirez. Um, my cell phone, obviously. Okay. Um, so I'll put a link. I'll put a link in the show notes for everybody with the Instagram and Facebook so that you guys can contact anybody who's listening or watching can contact if they want more information or check out, uh, check out all the stuff he does online uh, but thank you so much for coming on really appreciate all your wonderful advice and thank you everybody for listening please rate review and subscribe to the podcast and have a great day or night or whenever you're listening to peace out likewise brother i appreciate you man bye guys